guys, welcome to the lesson you're watching me on Let's Talk. My name is Michelle. Okay, tell me, how do you pronounce this word? Should it be success or success? Are you confused between the correct pronunciation? Well, like this, we have many other words in English which really confuse us about their pronunciation. And sometimes we think we are speaking the right thing, but only a very fluent speaker of English can understand that what we are saying is actually wrong. So if you want to make your pronunciation just perfect and up to the mark, then watch this complete lesson with me today where I am going to talk about words which have a confusing pronunciation. So are you ready? Then let's get started. Okay, so we have these words with us. Some of these are very common words and the other words are advanced vocabulary words. So in this lesson today, you are not just learning pronunciation, you are also learning advanced vocabulary and words with their meanings and examples. So keep watching. Let's start with the first one. Chaos. Okay, so first of all, let's find out what's the meaning of this word. Chaos means a lot of confusion, okay? So what, what will happen if all the animals in a zoo escape? That's a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion. Or think about yourself in school. When the bell rings, when the day is over, all the students gush out of the class and you have a lot of chaos, which means there is no order and there is a lot of confusion. So this is what you mean by chaos. Now let's find out how do we pronounce this word, okay? K -os. So as you can see that I have written a part of the word in bold letters, which is K. The reason I have done this is because you stress this part of the word more than this part. So you don't, you don't say chaos, you say chaos. Please repeat it after me. Chaos. Yes. And just to help you a little bit more, sometimes the stress in the word changes. For example, let's look at this word. Chaotic. You could say that this is a very chaotic school, which is an adjective. Okay. So chaotic is pronounced in a different way. Let me write it for you. Okay, so as you can see that there are different letters here which are written in caps lock and those are OT. So you will say this as chaotic, chaotic. So what's happening is the stress in the word is changing from the first syllable to the second syllable. Okay, like this we have many other words in English where the stress changes when the word changes. Okay, now let's look at the next one. The next word is debris. Yes, you heard me right. Here, S is silent. But before we go on to the pronunciation, let's find out what this word means. So debris is basically the remains after a construction or after an earthquake or after a disaster. So for example, if there is an earthquake in a city, what you will find is a lot of broken material. That broken material, which is of no use, is called debris, the remaining material. Or you will see that at a construction site, when a building is built, the remaining material, which is of no use, is called debris. So this is the word for you. And how would you use this in a sentence? You could say that I could see debris after the earthquake, which means you could see the remains. All right. Now coming on to the pronunciation. As I told you that S is silent in this word, so we would pronounce it as So as you can see that the second part of the word is stressed and the first part is not. So listen to me very carefully. If I stress the first part, the word becomes debris, all right? But if I stress the second part, the word becomes debris, which is the correct pronunciation of this word, okay? Now with this, we move forward. The next word we have is subtle, okay? 
Now you already guessed that there is one letter in the word which is silent and that is B. Okay. Now to find out the meaning of this word, subtle means something which is very faint. I mean something which you cannot notice. So you, if you see a person who is smiling just a little bit, you can't notice, you're not sure. It looks like they're smiling. So you could say that, oh, she had a subtle smile on her face, which means faint or something which is not fully visible, okay? So this is what subtle means, something which is very less and very difficult to notice. Okay, now if you want to pronounce this, okay, you would pronounce it as So this word also has two parts and here the first part is stressed. So the word is not subtle, the word is subtle and the word is also not subtle which a lot of English speakers tend to pronounce, learners actually who are learning the language. So you would say subtle, okay? Alright, now with this we move forward and look at the next very common word. We all know the meaning of success, right? Success means achievement, when you achieve something in life or when you get something good in your life. So you could say that she is very successful for her age or you could say that this is a lot of success for this age, which means too much success, right? So now we look at the pronunciation of this word more carefully. This word has two parts, okay? And we would pronounce it as, right. So I started my lesson with this. I said, is it success or success? Now, can you guess it? As you can see that the second part of the word is stressed. So the word is pronounced as success and not success. All right. So the next time you say this word, say it as success. Okay. Now with this, we look at the next one which is a slightly bigger word and might even scare you because you might think how to pronounce this word. Well, just to tell you, even if it's a big word or a small word, only one part of the word is stressed, okay? Definitely, this word has more parts than this word, but only one part will be stressed. I'll tell you how. First, let's find out the meaning of this word. This word is called as circumstance and circumstance means someone's situation, okay? So you could say that we both wanted to marry, but the circumstances did not allow, which means the situation did not allow you to get married to someone, all right? That's what we mean by this word. A lot of English learners tend to call it circumchance, which is wrong. We don't have any CH in the word. We only have S. So the word is actually circumstance and not circumchance. Okay, now when we talk about the pronunciation in more detail, this word is actually pronounced as So as you can see that all these words have two parts to them. Okay, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, except this one which has three parts. The same way circumstance has three parts to it and in these three parts the stressed part is the first part so you say circumstance okay repeat it after me circumstance wonderful you've got it right okay now with this we move to the next word now this word is a very peculiar and a very confusing word because you will often hear two pronunciations for this word because it has two different meanings so when we talk about the meaning, when you call this as content, that is a noun, which means what is something made up of, okay? Like the chapters in a book are called the content. So you would say, what is the content of this book? Which means, which are the chapters of this book? Or else you can pronounce this word as content. Okay, now when you say content, it means satisfied. Okay, so if you say that I am content with my life, which means you are satisfied with your life. Okay, and if you want to ask that to somebody, you would say, are you content with your life? Okay, now let's look at the pronunciation more carefully. So as I told you, it can be pronounced in two different ways. 
either it can be content or okay now since you're so smart I know that you have already grasped it that in this word in the two different pronunciations the word stress changes and that's why they are pronounced in a different way so in the first word we stress on the first part and we say content, okay? And in the second one, we stress on the second part and that's why we say content because the first part becomes much softer. Good. So content and content. Wonderful. Now let's move to the next word. This is a very useful word in English. It's pronounced as epitome, okay? Epitome. This means a perfect example. So if you uh, want to tell that somebody is a perfect example of something, you would use this word. So you could say that Mother Teresa is an epitome of generosity or kindness. Okay, now let's look carefully at its pronunciation. This word is pronounced as e p t me. Okay, so in this word, we have four syllables. Like in circumstance, we have three. In this one, we have four. And here, the stressed part is the second syllable. Okay, and it's pronounced as epitome. All right, epitome. And to remember this better, you could just remember to me, that this word has to me in the end, and it's almost pronounced like to me. Okay, so epitome for you, which means a perfect example. Great. Now we have the next word. This word is called as hierarchy. So this word is often used in organizations and companies. So if you are in your company and obviously you will have different positions, like you will have positions from the salesperson, right, to the manager and from the manager to the CEO. So this order of people from the lowest to the highest in a company or in an organization is called hierarchy, okay? And if you want to use it in a sentence, you could say that, I have been promoted to a new position and that's a part of corporate hierarchy, which means you move from one position to the next position. All right, now when we look at this word's pronunciation, it's really easy to remember. Let me tell you why. You have a special word in this. So this is how this word is pronounced. You stress here on the first syllable. And like epitome, this also has four parts, okay? And you stress on the first part. And the first part is, hi, yes. So that's how you start this word. You don't have to call it hierarchy because you might think hi might be, you know, he which it is not, it's actually high. So high or R K hierarchy. Okay, now we look at the next word, which is also a very important word in English. It's called as, what do you think it's called as? Do you want to give it a try? Okay, this looks like para, right? It looks like para to me as well. Now what about the second part? What does this look like? Is it digim, dim or dime? Well, this part is dime, and this word is actually pronounced as paradigm. Okay, now what does this word mean? So paradigm basically means a model, a model for something. So you could say that Microsoft is the paradigm for future computer softwares, which means it's the correct model for computer softwares in the future, right? So that's how you would use it if you wanna use it in a sentence. Now, if we talk about the pronunciation, Let's look at it. So this is how this word is pronounced. The stressed part is the first part of the word, which is pa, okay? So you say paradigm, 
So when you say the first part, there is air coming out of your mouth and you put in more energy when you say the first part. So paradigm, D-I-M-E, dime. Like you say dice, that's the same way you say dime, dime or dice. So that's a good way to remember this one, right? You can remember it from dice. Okay, now that we are already talking about games, let's also talk about gauge. Okay, so the way we pronounce game is the same way we pronounce this word, which is gauge. Let me just write how we pronounce this. So like you say game, that's how you say gauge. Now the interesting part about this word is, it has only one part. That's why the entire word is in caps lock. It has not got any more parts. And there is no tension about where to stress, where not to stress. So you would simply say gauge the same way you say game, okay? So what do we mean by gauge? Gauge means to guess, okay? So G for guess, G for gauge. Wow, it's really easy to remember this one. So when you're trying to guess something, you're trying to gauge something. For example, it's really easy to gauge people's character by their actions, which means it's easy to understand or guess about their character through their actions. So this is gauge for you. Now let's look at the next word, which looks very strange to me. Does it look strange to you? What, 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 like, how would you pronounce this? It's got G, it's got U, Sieg, Segu. Well, it should be Segu, but since I did not create English, so it's not Segu. It's actually pronounced as Segue. So in this word, the first part is stressed. This word is actually Segue. Way, okay, segue. So you stress on the first part and you say segue. Now you must be like, okay, I got the pronunciation, but what's the meaning? So segue is basically a transition, okay? When you move from one part to the other part smoothly, that's called segue. And it's a verb, so it could also be segued. So let me give you an example. You could say that after the presentation, she segued into the closing ceremony, which means she moved into the closing ceremony. So a transition or a movement from one part to the another part. All right, now the next one is a very common word. We all know what a refrigerator is, where we keep the items to stay cool in summers, okay? But the pronunciation is kind of peculiar and very confusing to a lot of learners. So let me write it for you here. Sorry. Okay, so let's just look at this carefully. The first part is not pronounced as re. It's not refrigerator, you would say refrigerator, okay? Now, this word has five syllables. It has five parts. So this is the maximum we have touched so far. We've seen two, three, four, and now this is a word with five parts. And here, the second part is stressed, that's why it's written in caps lock. So you will say refrigerator. Please repeat it after me. And when you try to say the F, make sure you bite your lower lip with your upper teeth. Refrigerator, okay? Refrigerator. Wow, I think you're really smart. Okay, now we look at the next word, which is differentiate. So if you have been into academics or studies, you must be having a question in your exams or in your classes, differentiate between this and this, which means tell the difference. So to differentiate means to tell the difference, like differentiate between the past and the present. So tell the differences between these two. Now, talking about the pronunciation, this word is actually pronounced as Differ, Ren, She, Eight. Okay? So as you can see, this word also is a five-syllable word like refrigerator. And here, we don't stress on the second syllable, we stress on the third syllable. So the word actually becomes differentiate. Yes. 
Many of us call it as differentiate or differentiate, but the word is actually differentiate, okay? So the stress is on ren, okay? So this is how we pronounce this word. Now with this too, we move forward to another common business word, and it's a huge confusion to pronounce this word. This word is actually pronounced as entrepreneur. This means a person who is heading a business or who has started a business, okay? A person at a higher position in the business who's running it. So the person who is running the business is called an entrepreneur. Let's look at the pronunciation of this word. Okay, so in this word, again, we have four syllables and not five. And in this word, the stressed syllable is the last part of the word, okay? The final part. It's, just repeat these parts after me. An, tra, pra, nur. So the stress is on the last part. Let's do it again. An, tra, pra, Neor. So it's entrepreneur. And if you want to use it in a sentence, you could say that the entrepreneurs saw this as a potential market. Great. Now we have the last word for history students because I love history, so I decided to pick a word from history. Archaeological. Something which comes from history or dates back to a very long time, like fossils, you know, things for which you have a proof now. Those, were, those things are called archaeological. Now, how do we pronounce this? Let's see that. So, R remains R. Key, A, Lodge, A, Co. Wow. And this is our final word with the maximum number of syllables. And when you learn this word, you should make sure that you're a good speaker of English if you can pronounce this right. Because this has got six syllables. So it goes R key, okay? It's not K, R K. Many of us say K, but it's actually key. R key uh, logical. So the catch here is that this word is stressed on lodge. Okay, so the next time you say it, you'll not say archaeological, you'll say archaeological. Okay, please repeat that after me. Archaeological. Okay, now that you've got it right, you are a fluent speaker of English because you are pronouncing a word with six syllables absolutely correctly. So thank you so much for watching this lesson with me. I hope today you have clearly understood the correct pronunciation for some difficult English words. So thank you so much for staying with me. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.